This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a thriller of a slate on tap for tonight across Major League Baseball because not only do we have like 33 pitchers who could rack up 10 strikeouts for tonight, but also we get to top things off with the Braves and Dodgers as the late night hammer here to break down that game and talk some strikeout props for today. We're going to talk to Rob Friedman, pitching ninja, pitches or pick his brain on that game, talk about some strikeout props and get you ready for what should be a stellar night across baseball. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here, as mentioned, by Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. You can find his work on Peacock, MLB, MLB on Fox, and now in the FanDuel Sportsbook app itself, Rob. So you are everywhere and adding yeah. to the list of places every single day. How you doing? I'm doing great. I, it stresses me out all those places wow <laughs> but the the app thing's kind of cool you know getting to, to talk about some games that was a fun little addition and i'm excited to see how it goes the rest of the year oh yeah it's a it's a blast actually i, I love stuff like anytime i can talk baseball like and spread it around absolutely everywhere Absolutely. Spread the good word far and wide. We're going to spread the good word around tonight's slate and talk about uh, that Braves Dodgers matchup and strikeouts and more in a second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. We have our college football week one preview up with Dr. Ed Fang. We have EPL match week four up with Austin Cass. I talked some NASCAR and Formula One yesterday, too. So Every sport pretty much covered here on the feed. Of course, NFL is back next week. We're talking futures and week one with Ryan Williams coming up on Tuesday after an off day for Labor Day. Make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Now, Rob, let's begin things by talking about this Braves-Dodgers matchup specifically because, you know, you're a pitching guy and two pretty fun pitchers in this game for tonight. A couple lefties, Max Reed and Julio Arias. Now, what I want to ask you, I know that your mindset is that of a pitcher. So I want to ask you, you're Max Reed or you're Julio Arias entering this game. What on earth are you supposed to do facing these two insane offenses? Uh, Chuck and Duck is what I would do. <laughs> like it, it's really, really tough. I, I thought Strider pitched great last night. Yeah. You make like one mistake against the Dodgers, especially against Mookie Betts and your hose. I don't even know how much of a mistake it was. It was just great hitting by Mookie. Yeah. And I mean, he's a stud. What are you going to do? It's it's tough because like there aren't like places to rest. We were talking before the show about like this this Braves lineup on the opposing side. And like if you look at their ISO, their isolated slugging, they have like seven or eight guys with a 200 ISO against lefties this year, which means for Arias, you can't take a batter off. So what's your thoughts in this game? You know, who do you think has the edge? I, you know, I'm not going to ask you to pick a winner because that's going to ruin the fun of just watching this game. But like, who do you think has the slight edge entering tonight? Um, I would say the Braves probably have a slight edge entering tonight just because um, Julio Rios has been known to make, I mean, he's great on top of yeah. his game. He is a, a stud, wicked slurve, all that. But he does make mistakes. And mm -hmm. if he's not on top of his game, absolutely at the very top, the Braves will make you pay. I would never want to pitch to this lineup. It's like <laughs> pitching in Coors Field on the moon right. with the wind blowing out at Wrigley. Like you can't do anything against them. Uh, they, when they were actually in Coors Field, that was unfair. Like that seemed like a, a violation of the Geneva Convention at that point. So <laughs> luckily they're not there so. anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so. I mean, and poor Lance Lynn learned it last night. Like he right. yelled, at, he, he struck out Olsen, yells, and then next inning gets absolutely shelled. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just don't poke the bear. Do not poke the bear. But that'll be a fun game all weekend. A four game series, hopefully a uh, a preview of what we'll see during the playoffs. So we'd love to see a rematch of this one later on as well. Let's talk some strikeout props for tonight. Rob, when you look at the board over at FanDuel Sportsbook, where are you seeing value right now? Well, I mean, for one, I love Yuri Perez and, and uh, like I think he is potentially a generational type pitcher. Yeah. He's an absolute ace in the making, as good as anybody. And I'm going to take him despite going against the Nats. And I get burned a lot on the Nats. I mean, they just mm -hmm. don't strike out that much. But he did strike out with seven last time out against uh -huh. the Nats. And I have him for six today. So I'm going to go with that. 
So I want to ask, I, th- I was going to like ask, I'm going to try to predict at least one leg and Perez is going to be the guy I was going to pick because, you know, he's awesome. And so like the downsides of Perez are obvious. You know, he doesn't go super deep in games. They don't give him a long pitch count because they want to conserve him because he's like 15 years old. Um, <laughs> he's facing the Nationals, like you said, low strikeout team and it's a repeat matchup. But I know all that stuff and I still have Perez projected for 6.7 strikeouts for tonight. So those things are accounted for and he's still a value at over five and a half and even money. Like how insane is that efficiency to be in this bad matchup, repeat matchup, not get a lot of leash and still be projected for 6.7 strikeouts. Um, he He's incredible. His command for his age and height, like usually Taller guys have a tough time dialing in command. They may throw hard when they're young, but it takes them a while to sync everything up. And maybe they learn it like Randy Johnson when he's, you know, upper 20s or something. And then your lights out. He's already there. Like, I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. He throws yeah. 100, just very great, you know, nasty little curveball and slider and, and has command. Like, yeah, he has everything. And he's a good, he seems like a good dude. Yeah, he's like the pitching version of what we saw from Juan Soto a couple years ago, where a guy comes up and immediately is a difference maker. I hope we get to see him pitching late into the year, too, because that was a delight with Soto as well. But like, I mean, the Marlins, not the best playoff odds right now, but there's still a chance. So I hope we get to see him in October. And and that's why I'm hoping they let him go a little deeper today, maybe like, you know, they're in the running. It wasn't not like they're saving an arm. So let him let him get like seven or eight K. So we're all cool. I mean, yeah, let's go way over this number. Uh, Again, it's five and a half even money at FanDuel Sportsbook for Aerie Perez. What about other strikeout props you like for tonight? All right. So I like the little run Mitch Keller's on right now. I'm going to go Keller six K's or more. Um, I just think he's turned it back around. He went in a little pitching slump. He looks good right now. I've noticed his pitch shapes look good. So I'm going to take him. I also have him above this number. So we're two for two so far, uh, as far as my projections and your strikeout, uh, your strikeout props, because I don't know, like he seems, is he a big tinkerer? Like a guy who's always trying to find the right pitch mix. Cause I feel like for him, it's been a roller coaster of like, Pitching really well, slump, but now I think he's back on the ascent again, and it seems like he just found like the combo that's working for him. Yeah, and I also think he he lost some of his his sweeper movement to me, mm-hmm. and I thought that that really compromised some of his results. And it looked so much sharper. I don't know what he did. He does tinker with stuff because you know he's come a long way from where he was, and his stuff is downright filthy right now. And it was earlier in the year, and he was a you know basically my one of my go to K prop oh, yeah. guys. So uh, I think he's back, and I like him tonight. And his number is pretty low, over five and a half strikeouts, plus 124. I haven't projected for six and a half, so uh, we're two for two so far. Let's see if we can go three for three. Which other strikeout props are you on for tonight? Okay, I'm going with Kodai Senga against the Mariners because I just had, like, come on, the Mariners K a lot. Kodai racks up Ks. I like that. Playing at home, I mean, he loves pitching there, too. Like, he always wants to put on a show for the fans at City Field, so... Yeah, I got him for seven Ks or more tonight. Uh, he is over six and a half is minus 144 for Senga. And we did it three for three, Rob, because I have Senga projected for 7.5 strikeouts, even though the Mets are obviously not in contention. They're still letting him go deep in games. I'm not sure if that's just like the competitor in him or what it is, but like he's going deep in games. He is being effective. Like you said, it's a good matchup for him, too. So we did it. We got the sweep three for three where my numbers agree with all three of your recommendations. I, I love to see that. Awesome. There we go. Now that means we won. So I don't even have to watch the games. Yeah. What's the point? You know, you can yeah. just sit back and enjoy. Okay. So totally. Senga for seven plus strikeouts, Perez for six plus strikeouts and Mitch Keller for six plus strikeouts, all numbers that Rob is on for tonight. Now the pitching leaderboard market is not up yet over at FanDuel Sports, but we, we kind of know what the general breakdown may be. Now, I want to ask you about someone who I think might be, I think he'll be pretty high in in where he ranks for tonight. But I still think I want to at least see where Freddie Peralta comes in because he's been lights out. I don't know. I, so like when he first came up, two pitch guy, kind of like one and a half pitch guy. And now he's using that change up more through it the most he's thrown at the entire season last time out, 23%. And 
I feel like it's unlocked a new level for him. So I don't know where Peralta will come in at because, and that matters a lot. The number matters a lot. But I think, Rob, the first person I want to check out is Peralta because of what he's done. What's your thoughts on the leaderboard and Peralta tonight? Literally, my gut instinct Love is it. Peralta or, or Senga as the favorites. Um, depending on Peralta's odds, I like that because exactly what you're saying, like he is on a roll. Yeah. And it does not surprise me to see him with 10 to 12 Ks. Um, yeah, just it's what he does right now. He's electric. So yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, Scherzer is also a contender, but he's face he's facing the twins, but that's a very matchup. And you know, again, they just saw him. A lot of good hitters in that lineup. Maybe Byron Buxton is back tonight. Who can say it on that one? Um, but like I think Peralta is going to be pretty fun. Any dark horses? Like, I guess the Paras might be tough just because of the length. Like, I don't know if he can quite get there on this kind of slate, but I think that the Senga one also does make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. I mean, those are the two guys I'd be looking at. I mean, again, Scherzer may be an outside look because he can, yeah. you know, even in a, in a repeat matchup, I don't know that someone has an advantage over him sure. only because he's got so many different options right. to go to. He may have an advantage having seen how hitters react. So right. I don't know. Um, but I would definitely take a look at those three. The repeat matchup does go both ways. That's very yeah. true. You know, he can he can spot weaknesses. Uh, he's he's a psycho, so uh, <laughs> that definitely. can that can definitely work against you for sure as well. All righty, that is Rob Freeman. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find his work on Peacock, MLB, MLB on Fox, and of course, right here in the FanDuel Sportsbook app as well. Rob, it was a pleasure to get you back on the show. Looking forward to talking to you again throughout September, and uh, good luck and enjoy watching all the baseball tonight. Absolutely. Let's win. Let's do it. Why not? I think that's a great idea. I'm on board. I could use that after Tuesday. So let's uh, <laughs> let's do that for sure. All righty. Uh, that's Rob Freeman again. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja to see all that fantastic work. And again, check him out right here in the FanDuel Sportsbook app as well. We're going to dive into some money lines and totals I like for tonight across FanDuel Sportsbook in just one second. But first, get out your game day gear because college football is back and FanDuel wants you to join in on the fun. Right now, all customers get a no-sweat bet back for week one. Just place a bet on any week one college football game. You'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. Bet on money lines, spreads, totals, and more. Just visit the FanDuel Sportsbook app and kick off the college football season season with America's number one sports book must be 21 plus and present in select states refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt max refund five dollars unless otherwise specified restrictions apply see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET. In Massachusetts, hope is here, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. And in New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. Now, not only did Rob and I have synergy on the strikeout props for tonight, where I was showing value in the projections on the overs for those guys, but also a lot of the guys we discussed, or two of them, I should say, are guys where I'm showing value on their money lines for today. Let's start things off by talking about Freddie Peralta and the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers money line is minus 102 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, and I do show value right there. So I'm going to take the Brewers at that number for tonight. It all revolves around Freddie Peralta, like we said absolute heater for him recently and i do feel like the market's a bit slow to catch up on this one over the past 10 starts peralta throwing more change-ups as we discussed and he has a 2.81 skill interactive era in that time with a 39 percent strikeout rate hard hit rate for him not all that bad either at 35.9 percent so he's checking all the key boxes now he's facing a tough offense in the phillies but Peralta had 11 strikeouts against the Rangers two starts ago. So he can do well against tough offenses, especially when he is at home where that strikeout rate does go up quite a bit. The Brewers offense, obviously much worse than the Phillies, and that does matter. But the Brewers bullpen, just as good as the Phillies. And the Brewers have one of the best defenses in all of baseball. 
So I feel like they're going to keep this game pretty low scoring, which is a good thing for us for tonight. If we're getting minus 102 on the team at home, I find that pretty enticing. I've got the Brewers at 55.8% to win. Their implied odds are 50.5%. So there is value in the Brewers for me for tonight. Other one is the other guy that Rob was talking about. He likes Mitch Keller's strikeout prop. I like Keller's Pirates to win tonight against St. Louis Cardinals. Some slight movement here. It was minus 102 earlier on. It is now down to minus 104 for the Pirates to win this game, but still below where my model has it for tonight. I mentioned before, roller coaster year for Keller, uh, but on a good swing right now. Looking at the past six starts for Keller, he has thrown more sinkers and cutters along with fewer curveballs. And typically an increase in fastballs generally and, and sinkers specifically isn't going to lead to a lot of strikeouts, but it's been good for Keller. 27% strikeout rate, 3.73 skill interactive ERA, and the results have been good too other than um, he had one bad start against the Brewers in there. Outside of that, the results have been pretty good. Cardinals are starting Dakota Hudson, who has not been bad, but is letting up a 44.3% hard hit rate since he uh, got fully stretched out. So I'm generally, I generally think Hudson's better than perception of him. So um, I'm not actually looking to target him, but I don't think it's a match we need to fear with the Pirates for tonight. Now, with the Brewers money or the Pirates money line being uh, minus 104, that puts their implied win odds at 50.98%. My model has them 52.98%, so still two percentage points above where the market has them. That's not a huge cushion. So not a ton of wiggle room here, but I do think it's one of the, my favorite ones for tonight. So go with the Brewers at minus 102 and the Pirates at minus 104 for some money lines for tonight. Final bet of the night is going to be actually a total, and it's a total I feel pretty decent about. Now, I was thinking about this, and I'm concerned about James Paxton's current form for the Red Sox. And as a result of that, I do show value in the Royals' money line, which is plus 152 at FanDuel Sportsbook. However, I also think the Red Sox offense is going to put the clamps down on Jordan Lyles and potentially put up a lot of runs and can Kansas City keep pace. So I think the better bet to take advantage of some concerns around Paxton would be checking out the total here. Over nine and a half for the Red Sox and Royals is minus 110. And I feel like there is value in that number. Paxton has had his velocity be down for his past nine starts. And he has a 4.69 skill interactive ERA in that time. A lot of that has come against better offenses than Kansas City's. And he did shut out the Royals for five and one third innings during this stretch. So he's already done well against this offense. But in that game, Kansas City had a 46.7% hard hit rate. So allowing zero earned runs there probably was a little bit lucky. The Red Sox facing Jordan Lyles and the Royals uh, bullpen, which is not very good on the opposing side. So the Red Sox, honestly, there's a scenario in which they hit the over on this number all by themselves. But I do think the Royals offense will contribute at least something to this game and help us get towards the over on nine and a half runs. So again, over nine and a half is minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Red Sox and Royals. I am taking that in large part because I want to, I'm a bit wary of James Paxton right now based on the way things look for him recently. So for me, I've got uh, the Pirates at minus 104, the Brewers at minus 102, and Red Sox and Royals over nine and a half at minus 110 for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Give a big thank you once again to Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find him right here in the FanDuel Sportsbook app as well for some select games, breaking them down as they occur. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Back with you once again Tuesday. No show Monday due to Labor Day, but Ryan Williams will be in the house on Tuesday. We're going to talk some futures before NFL season begins and take a look at week number one as well. It is going to be a blast all next week. We'll talk to you then. Have a fantastic and safe Labor Day weekend. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 